Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wish that you are having a good time, wherever you are, whenever you are, uh, in your workplace or with your family, what you are doing. And uh, last week we talked about the three different kind of states, fragile, failing and uh, strong state. And this week we promise to talk about moving from the fragile and failing into the stable and strong state. It's very important to thank my colleague, as I thank them every week, uh, Sahar Abdurrahman and Ahmed Sheikh and if you want to join any of these Facebook uh, pages you please do uh, I put this drawing on my Facebook and I received a lot of uh, funny responses about the map for the treasure and others this is the state that we are looking at at the moment when we're trying to start with our vision some project to make it stable post conflict or post war or post actually uh, revolution. What I am showing here in the middle is the capital with the different airports inside the capital and the road connecting the airports and connecting the different areas in the capital. What I look at this drawing, the black line is the border between different districts or different wilaya and the Rectangular uh, red space is the capital with small airport in the middle and these green lines are the roads between the capital of East District and the capital of the district and the national capital. So the smaller circles inside each district which inside this uh, inside this uh, uh, district which is a green and uh, red and the blue and the yellow are the market the local markets and this red lines here roads inside the district itself to connect different towns and villages in the district itself. In this drawing, I focused on two things, very important when we come out of unstable situation. I focus on how can we make the people busy by creating local market for them to let them to take their initiatives and increase or and make an income for themselves. It's number one. Number two, I focused also on the communication inside the district between different villages and different cities and different towns and between the different cities in different districts and actually the, the, the cities and the capital of the country. This communication is extremely important for the first step of stability of any post-war or post-conflict or post-revolution uh, 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 state. So local market to create local economy and to create local jobs for the people and open transport system between cities and villages. This is what we need to look at. After any revolution or any war, the public expectation will be rocket high. Rocket high. They will consider you as like prophets and messengers will just solve the problem which lasted for more 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years 
in overnight okay have to be very careful with this but you have to bring the public assurance on the table by making real empowerment to the citizen the citizen has to build trust and confidence in the new leadership which came after this change how as i said Earlier, when I was describing the drawing which I made by my hand, building or letting the community to make community markets, as you can see it here, uh, to start to take their own initiatives to find a mean of uh, income for themselves, to let the farmers to be able to go back to farm the lands, and to open the communication system and transportation between towns, villages, districts, and cities, and, 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 and. This is going back here to the public assurance. As I said, public assurance and empowerment goes, stage number one, local market, uh, local projects by themselves, opening the agriculture, and transportation. More also for the fishermen to give them the free hand to go and earn their living from the sea and from the river and from the ocean. The manual work, handicrafts, I said not only free transportation but free movement of goods between different municipalities, reducing the prices of some commodities to give more confidence in the new leadership particularly oil, particularly transportation, to let people to feel that there's a change and there's a positive change. I know sometimes that people might say we don't have money to spend, but if you reduce the price, more people will use the service. Then to look at something what I call transitional election during this period. What do I mean by transitional election? Especially for the MPs or the member of the parliament and the president and the prime minister. But let me tell you how to do it. First of all, we should organize the local election in every district through the municipality themselves. Each municipality will be responsible to elect the local leaders and the mayors, okay, or the governors, okay, them, not the central government. There's no appointment, there's no appointment, there's no appointment. On the ministerial level, it should be within the ministry itself that the employees inside the ministry will be electing the transitional period minister as a technocrat to manage or to govern the ministry during this period of time. No national election. Also as prime minister, we can, with one condition, it should be like election of an individual which is not attached to any political party just public figures. This is how we can look at this first stage of electing the people to stabilize the situation while we are going to the transitional period. If there is a president, we'll treat him or her the same, like we did the prime minister. The president should come from a non-political party, does not attach himself or herself to any political party, and actually people will elect him or her from the public. This for the transitional period. Even the MPs, the member of the parliament, political party in this point has the right or have the right to nominate their candidate, but when they win the election during the transitional period, they will be member of the parliament or the house of Commons, or whatever they call it with a political party 
who might have won the election but does not have the power to create a government because we we'll make a transitional government. So here when we, when we elect the MPs, the member of the parliament, they do not form government. So people might say, what are they going to do in the parliament or in the uh, whatever we call the, uh, 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 the, the institution at the time, they are going to look at how to uh, make the new constitution, to reform the laws, to fight corruption, to look at the economy. They look at the whole policy and procedures will need to be taken by the future government to try to make the law and order for the coming period but not to run the government so the winning party in this general election does not govern the country but the MPs will sit down to agree on how to reform the economy to build the economy to fight corruption to build an institution to build strong civil society and 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 all this legislation and laws that needed to be done by the parliament at that time this is how we can come actually out from fragility and failure into failure and fragility into stability. What is the philosophy of our transitional period? During the transitional period, we don't want to do any drastic change. Keep things moving, business as usual, no major deals which might lead to a chaos and corruption. This period might be four to five years. As I mentioned earlier, no executive parliamentary election. As I said, these are just keep the things going. And we do not know why, why there is no... Uh, uh, this, 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 this political party uh, the, who won the election cannot make a, a government because, because of that. Because we don't know the credibility and the integrity. They might be emerging in six months. They might not, not have any, uh, any track record, any history. So they just came, like happened in different countries, which become a joke. After six months, or one year, a uh, political party established in six months or one year, and they become the prime minister and president from there, winning there. No, uh, because we don't know the credibility and the integrity of the, we don't know the credibility and integrity of the emerging political parties, and we don't know that the existing one, the bad one, could be bad political party by take over again. Uh, the executive parliamentary election will be after the transitional period. Uh, regarding security, people will tell us about security. We have an existing security system and we have People's Security Committee that actually can coordinate the security during that level. So people can contribute to help the national security which is actually uh, found there. Who can lead during this six months to one year till we make all these steps which I mentioned before? We should agree on a credible group, a group of credible and credible public figures accepted by the public. This period six, to one, six months to one year. So while we are making the transitional election for the MPs, for the president, for the prime minister, for the ministers, for the municipality, for the local market and all these sort of things, all, 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 we should get people to organize it who will be a group of credible, integral, integral public figures accepted by the public. This will last for about 6 to 12 months before we start the transitional period, which is about 4 to 5 years. The general election which makes the government will come after the transitional period which is about four to five years, okay? How can we change the fragile and failing state or the failing and fragile state into stable state? As I said before and I'm saying that again, the failing state is a state that still suffers from armed conflicts, post devastation natural justice, uh, post revolutions and or, or 
post military, armed military coup, and so on, so on, so on. This actually, all this actually, who are they? Okay, the failing state is a state that still suffers from this. Why they are failing or they are uh, fragile? Because they have weak or absent state institution. Uh, they could be militarized or secretized, and yani militarization and secretization of the public affair. They have weakness or absence of civil side sector, that's why they are, fa they are fragile or failing. They fear the fear of the uh, private business and the departure of the private business from the country, whether they are actually national or uh, foreign. Fragmentation of social infra infrastructure and communities, weakness or absence of social services, absence of parliamentary freedom, and severe corruption and interference of neighboring regional and international powers into their affairs. That's why this makes them fragile and make them uh, failing. So, steps of transferring failing into fragile. We explain what is failing state means, what fragile state means, and what strong state means last week. What's our strategy in making this change? First of all, we have to make a community-based, or to create a community-based dialogue. Community-based dialogue. Then there's a lot of armed groups. If we're going to consider them all of them terrorists, we have a never-ending story. We have to rehabilitate all these armed groups and to ask to convince them to drop down their weapons and become civil servants or become a part of the future security and the future military. Building the community market, as I mentioned before, prioritizing alternative education. And regarding education, I focus on education. During this period, it's very difficult to do things as it is, like the, 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 the very expensive state education. The alternative education will be like vocational training, the skills education, short-term education, education of gifted pioneers, and so on. It's alternative. Freedom of transportation, as I mentioned before, as well. So this will actually uh, get us moving from failing into fragile. Also building civil society, organization, and sector, laying the roadmap for the state and we have to build the state institution as well, agreeing on transitional period. During this time, we have to look, as I mentioned before, we have to agree on a on four to five years period, not less than three years and not more than five years. Okay? Uh, agreeing also on the ethics, the values, and all uh, uh, this capacity building program for all the human resources, uh, look at the media, public awareness, and so on, so on, increasing the level of freedom and civil liberty. All this kind will be first steps to get things going and get out from the failing state into the fragile uh, state. As I mentioned, one of the cornerstones of this is actually creating as many local marks as we can to have local uh, income for local, for local communities. How can you go from fragile to a stable state? What are the different types of fragile state? As I will mention a few states that were strong and stable but became fragile because of military coups. Whenever a military coup happens, it will change the system and the status quo and it weakens the infrastructure of any stable state. Or a state that they think themselves that they are strong and they are stable because they have a strong army, because they have uh, uh, they are a wealthy country, but unfortunately they don't have freedom of expression, they don't have free civil liberty for people or, or strong civil society organization. This uh, state consider itself strong, but it's not strong, it's fragile, because the, the foundation is weak and have a lot of holes, and some of them is, are fragmented. The third one, the stable state and, uh, and strong state became fragile after major natural disaster, as I mentioned yesterday in the Arabic, uh, uh, lecture is actually in Banda Aceh in, 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 in Indonesia. If this Banda Aceh area was a state by itself, was a strong state, you know why? Because the tsunami when it came and hit Banda Aceh, it wipes out the people, it wipes out the, out, out the files and the structure of the country. So it went out straight from, uh, if it was, if, Banda, if we consider Banda Aceh as a state, it went out from 
a, a stable state into uh, not only a fragile, could be even failing state. Post-war as well, with all this destruction that you have. What are the common characteristics of the fragile states? Which is something I keep repeating them again. Uh, the abs one of the most common characteristics is the absolute control of the security and military forces of the public affair. When the military and security become in control, it becomes either failing or fragile state. An efficient and weak parliamentary system, restriction or absence of civil liberty, as we mentioned before, militarization and securitization of civil society, private public sectors, and government, lack of no lack or no funding of social services, and instead they spend 80 to 90 percent of the state budget on security and military forces, uh, failing is failing of a uh, falling of the economy, uh, the state of economy, resources, assets, and other. Uh, sorry, 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 falling the state, falling the state economy, resources, assets, and other others in the hands of military and security forces. When this economy uh, and assets and resources will be controlled by the military and security, this is a failing or fragile state. Creating an autocratic dictatorship regime supported by military, security, uh, and corrupt private business and businessmen. This actually is a common characteristic of the fragile state, which can become failing state. How can we transfer a fragile state to a strong state? Some of this have been mentioned before, as I mentioned, but most importantly, the citizen. Citizens' empowerment. The citizen should feel that they are responsible for the country and the country belongs to them. This is the most important thing, confidence. Increasing the level of civil liberty, freedom, transparency, accountability, and the enforcement of law and order in the state, building and empowering stronger civil society, completing the building process of the state institution and national on the national and local level. How can you win the, the trust of the citizen? How can you people win the, the trust of the citizen? By showing the national resources to them. Extremely important. That we are a rich country, we are not a poor country. And the citizen will understand that his country or her country is rich, so they will be able to contribute to invest in their country. Freedom of speech as a regular consultation, social services. Don't ever, never, 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 never ignore the citizen. Number six, empowering the local authorities and municipalities. And each local authority, authority and municipality is in charge of the wealth of it of it is districts. When we look on the national level about natural, natural resources, wealth and assets and others, this is very important for me because this is some of my dreams. Because we might have rich districts in the south or the north and this rich district in the west and east. What happened? We share the wealth locally and nationally. So for the wealth of any district, 25% of the income from such a district should be spent on the social service and building the structure of the district or the municipality itself. The 75% of the wealth or go to the central government, which will divide them into two pots. One pot, which is 50%, this for the national program, like uh, 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 public service program, social service program on education, on uh, health, on agriculture, on road, on an aviation, or industry, and all this, 50%. The other 25% will be spent as follows. 10% uh, for the central government administration. 10% invest in economy, economic investment. And 5% strategic, actually, reserve for the, for the country itself. At 
of the wealth or the income will be spent locally in the district itself. Or the government. Also, for that, we need to agree on a national strategy and roadmap following the philosophy. What's our philosophy when we make this roadmap? Bottom up approach to come back to the citizen, leaving no one behind. Free movement and transportation between different municipalities. I mentioned this before, encouraging small scale initiatives to and businesses organized by youth to create jobs, actually on a smaller scale, investing in building local economy market to actually to create jobs, actually without big capital money, using different soft powers and local and lo uh, on local and national level to support the process of transformation of the state, guaranteeing the maintenance of civil liberty and democracy through transparent process of consultation and participation of every citizen. These are the cornerstones of going from failing to fragile and from fragile into stable state. Coming back to this, let me tell you about one of the questions which was raised with one of my friends from Europe, actually from Germany, I think, or from uh, somewhere else. Why I talk about politics? Yes, is that uh, you, Dr. Hani, as, as, as a humanitarian, now you become political. I said, I'm not, not talking about, I'm not political. I'm talking on the civil society sector. Civil society sector and organization is cross-cutting every function and every service in the country, whether on the children, the water, and uh, on uh, co uh, fighting corruption, human rights, even a lot of these are cross-cutting. So I'm not supporting a government, I'm not against any government or with any government. But we say that actually these are the talk about the civil side, the role of civil side sector. And next week, inshallah, we are going to organize a talk about what is the civil society sector, what is the civil society organization, and the role of the civil society sector and organization. So be tuned for next week, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.